Everybody, I want us to imagine something today. Imagine you had a time machine. Oh, man. What, when would you go back? It only travels back. It can't travel to the future, okay? Uh, imagine you had only a backwards time machine. Would you use it? Imagine this time machine, though, only goes back to one particular day. This one went back, give or take, 2,000 years, and it's a Sunday. Wow, cool. It's early in the morning, and look, there's a crowd of people. Mm, looks like two, 3,000 people over there. There's a city that we're in. People are talking all sorts of language. Look, some people are preaching. Some guys, 11, 12 guys, maybe a dozen or so. Yeah, they're preaching over there. They're talking, and oh, they're speaking English. Well, you know, they're speaking all sorts of different languages. Isn't that pretty cool? Well, it's the day that God established his church. It's, we're in Acts chapter 2. How cool would that be? How awesome would that be? What if you uh, just sort of fly in the wall type of situation? You know, you're already Christian, so you don't need really to be baptized again. Uh, fly in the wall type of situation. Uh, uh, Peter, th this guy, he, you, you find out, like, hey, who's this guy? That's Peter. You don't know Peter? And then, so someone tells you in the crowd. Uh, and you follow them. Uh, they go down to uh, the river. They go down to the river. Uh, and for hours, these people are baptizing people, dunking them one after the other. When, thousands of people. Have you ever seen a group of 1,000 people? Now triple that. And then you could probably double that with just the observers and curious people who are wondering what in the world there's thousands of people gathering by the, by the river for. Many, many thousands of people. Uh, so, and uh, curiosity gets the best of it. You know, you know the, the scientist who gave you the time machine, he said, like, you're not really supposed to talk to anybody and do anything, but, you know, it wouldn't hurt to just talk to one person, you know, right? You know, they, they just don't tell them about, like, uh, pizza or, or it, like, cars or anything. That, that might, you know, rock their world. <clears throat> what if you ask one, hey, hey, okay, sh 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 come here, come here, come here. Uh, what? I saw you just baptized, you, and you, 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 there was a sermon and all this sort of stuff. What church did you just become a member of? And it's weird that the response that you get is not the response that you expect. There, there's, there's really sort of no response. He just sort of like looks at you. And you say, you are just baptized, right? He says, yeah, yeah, I was, I was just baptized. I was just baptized. I'm so excited. You know, they, they were talking about Jesus, and, you know, yeah, I mean, the, you know, he did some miracles, and it was, it was pretty cool, but, yeah, we crucified him. Yeah, uh, that, that felt pretty bad. Uh, he's super sorry about that, uh, but I don't know what you're talking about. And you say, well, yeah, yeah. Uh, so what, what church did you, did you just join? Are, are you, it was a Baptist, or maybe you're Catholic, or Methodist, or Lutheran, Seventh-day Adventist. Like, which church did you just join? Which, which one did you pick? He would look at you like you have two heads. Like, I don't, I don't, I, you're, 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 you're speaking nonsense to me. You, you could just as well talk about Star Wars and spaceships, and you would make just as much sense, sense to that person in the first century as you speak about all of these different denominations. It would make maybe more sense, because they've at least heard of stars, right? Stars, oh, like the things in the sky? <clears throat> In ships, they would have heard of ships, so uh, they, they, might think, they, they might know a little bit more about Star Wars than they know about denominations. What this person would say is like, listen, man, I have no, or ma'am, uh, I have no idea what you're talking about. I joined the church that Jesus built. He, he promised to build his church, uh, and he's, the, the church is his body, according to Peter and the rest of these guys, and he, he only had one body. He's only got one church, and I, I'm a member of that one. Acts chapter 2 and verse 47. Let's go and flip there uh, real quick. Acts chapter 2 and four, verse 47. I know not every translation has uh, this verse rendered the exact same way. Uh, but at least in the New King James, King James, and other translations. Acts chapter 2 verse 47. Praising God. So this is talking about the, the people who, who uh, obeyed the gospel. Praising God and having favor with all the people. The Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. Matthew chapter 16, verse 16, uh, Jesus promised to build his one church, singular. I will build my church. 
And in Acts chapter 2, it says that those who were saved were added to that one church. And later in the Bible, it says that he will save that one church. So, <clears throat> all right, you jump back in the time machine, and you're all confused, and you, you come back home. Okay, so we're done, we're done pretending now. But that does bring up the question, if in the first century, there were not all of these different denominations, well, where in the world did they come from? Where did they come from, and why are they here? Why are they here? If you recall, one of the last things Jesus said before he was crucified is he was praying to the Father. And he, he was praying what we just read during the Lord's Supper. He was praying that, if at all possible, this not happen. But he also prayed for his disciples, those who would follow him, that they would be one. Now you're talking about like one, like Americans are one even though we're like, we fight amongst each other and like, we kind of don't like each other sometimes? Or are we talking about like one, like one flesh between a husband and a wife? They are one. But Jesus says, I pray that they are one as Jesus and the Father are one. That's how united Jesus wants his church, his followers to be. And that was one of the last things that Jesus prayed for before he died for us and for that church. And then Paul says, as Jonathan just read in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 10, uh, now I plead with you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak different things and that there be many divisions. No, sorry. You better, better open it up because I might, I might misread it. Now I plead with you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing and that there be no divisions among you and he takes it even further but that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment that is the command of god to us today to god divisions uh, in other words denomination is as wrong to him as offensive to him as anything else you can possibly think of. De denominationalism is offensive to him. Let's say uh, someone is working a job. Let's say Jaime's working a job. And they say, we'll pay you $100 an hour. All right, and he works hard. He's a hard worker. We'll pay you $100 an hour. Uh, and then he works 100 hours. Oh, man, that, that's a rough day, but lame. Paycheck, right? It's gonna be a big fat paycheck. And then they give him a hundred one dollar bills at the end of the week. Is that the same thing? Is a one dollar bill the same denomination as a one hundred dollar bill? It's a different denomination, and it would be unacceptable to Jaime. At least it should be. He, he's, he's nice enough to where he might not say anything. He, pro he probably would. That is a different denomination, and it should be unacceptable to him. Right? And if, if we, as sinful as we are, if we have the good enough sense to say that a different denomination is unacceptable when I've worked so hard for this denomination or this, this different thing, this is the thing that I promised, this is the thing that I wanted, this is what I was working for, and then someone tries to give me something else. What if we just call it a $100 bill, but it's really a $1 bill? No, that's not good enough. That's not good enough. Why are there so many churches? There's one Bible, but hundreds, maybe thousands, maybe tens of thousands of different denominations over the years that all claim Christianity. And it can be confusing to a lot of people. I mean, probably by the time we got here, <clears throat> the 10, 15 minute drive tops, we've probably passed maybe a half a dozen, maybe a dozen, maybe two dozen different churches, church buildings different denominations. There's probably a half a dozen within walking distance of my house. Why are there so many? It could be confusing, and indeed it has been confusing for many people over the years. A lot of people just go to whatever church is closest, and if they teach the truth, then lucky you. If they teach uh, something that's wrong, then what are we going to do about that? One church is teaching this, another church teaches that. Paul says we should teach the same thing, but that is not what all these different churches who are claiming Christ do. 
Who's right? Does it even matter? Does it really matter who's right? Like, what if someone gives, gives what if denominationalism is more like, uh, like, instead of a hundred dollar bill, someone gives Jaime a hundred euro bill. I think they have hundred euro bills. Like, that's pretty close. It's close enough, right? Or like a hundred Canadian uh, pesos. Like, what, what if someone did that? Like, yeah, it's close enough. Like, you round up, round down. Close enough, like, some, some people would say denominations are, are a little bit like that. Like, yeah, it's, it's not that bad. Like, yeah, it's, it's a division, but it's just like a little division, right? Like, like Gators versus the Seminoles, right, Haley's? It's just a little, little thing. They still got married. They're fine. <laughs> They're fine, everybody. <clears throat> uh, so someone, and sometimes it's described like, well, imagine, uh, like, we're all traveling down the same road together, but maybe we're in different cars. Like, you're in a Volkswagen, like, you're Lutheran, and I'm in, uh, I'm in a Ford, right? You're, you're in a Jaguar, you're Anglican, right? It's cause, yeah. uh, and then me, I'm, I'm, a, I'm an a, a Episcopal. Like, we're, we're in different cars, you can pick whatever car you want. Don't pick a Chevy. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, we're, we're all in all these different cars. Uh, but we're, we're, we're going the same direction. We're all headed to the same place. We're all going down the same road and, and just in different vehicles. Some people will try to describe it like that. They'll, they'll try to downplay what Jesus prayed for, what he commanded, and what Paul commands as well. They'll say, it's not really that big of a deal because we're really headed the same, the same way. In fact, uh, one person you might have heard of, the Pope, just recently, a few days ago, said this. And he, he was speaking in Italian. Uh, this is a translation from uh, a Catholic source. So this, this is a translation, but... Um, uh, I know a little bit of Spanish, and, and it, it sounded pretty close. This is a translation from what the Pope said just recently uh, about the situation. He says, quote, All religions are paths to reach God. They are, to make a comparison, uh, like different languages, different dialects to get there. But God is God for all. Well, that last sentence is true. God is God for all, sure. If you start to fight saying, My religion is more important than yours, or mine is true and yours isn't, where will this lead us? There's only one God, and each of us has a language to arrive at God. Some are Sikh, Muslim, Hindu, Christians. They are different ways to God. That's what the Pope said. Now that sounds good. I would like it if that were true, if, if I'm being honest. I would like it if more people were going to heaven. If that were true, I would like that. But the question is, is it true? First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 21, test or prove all things. Hold fast to that which is good. Not many people would say one religion is good as another. Like most people have enough sense to say, <clears throat> well, if you're Christian, well, that sort of, ne of necessity um, means that you don't believe that uh, Islam is true or Hinduism is true or some of these other religions. If you're Muslim, you don't believe that this religion or that religion is true. So, like, most people have, have sense enough to say, like, well, yeah, religions are largely mutually exclusive. Like, if you're a bachelor, you cannot be married. If you're married, you cannot be a bachelor or a bachelorette. Right? So certain things are mutually exclusive. And most people have the sense enough to not say that. Uh, but many people will treat uh, one so-called Christian denomination as just as good as another. After all, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. So if, if our Hindu neighbors, if our Hindu friends reject the deity of Christ, then they, they cannot come to the Father. Okay. In the Bible, God says that denominations or divisions in the church are not only are they not a good thing, but they are a bad thing. So uh, where, uh, and we looked at the passage already, but where do all these denom denominations go from? I'm going to give a short history lesson of where they come, came from and why, then we can sort of help understand uh, what is going on. In short, uh, people disagreed about something religiously, and they said, I'm going to take my ball and go home, right? It's a, that's the 21st century way of, of saying it, at least. So there, there was a disagreement, uh, and rather than working that out based upon God's word, they say, well, we disagree, we can't agree, we're just going to split, and we're going to have two different groups. So the first major denomination we find is, uh, is no longer around, but in, uh, in, the, um, uh, in 1054, uh, the, the uh, Roman Catholic Church was birthed, it was begun, uh, when the Greek Orthodox Church split from it. The Greek Orthodox Church disfellowshipped 
the, uh, the, the Western church, so there was the Eastern church and Western church, the, the Eastern church uh, dis, uh, disfellowshipped the Western church and they became a splinter of this church. So rather than the, the church, was, which was the main denomination back in the day, uh, now there were two major denominations. The Greek Orthodox Church is what we know it today, and then the Roman Catholic Church. That, that is how the church, those two denominations, began. And pretty much, uh, so if, if you've ever been to a Catholic church, you'll say, oh, no, no, the Catholics believe that the Catholic church began way back in, in here, and Peter, and this. And, but the, the, the Eastern church, the Eastern Orthodox church also believes that the Jehovah's Witnesses, they think that the Jehovah's Witness church began all the way back in Genesis with Adam and Eve. And every church, every denomination says, oh, no, yeah, we're, we're the one, like we go way back all the way to the, all the, way to the beginning. So like that, that's, that's not unique to, the, unique to the Catholics or the Eastern Orthodox or Jehovah's Witnesses or Mormons or anything. Paul says in Acts chapter 20, in verse 28, let's flip there real quick, everybody. Uh, Acts chapter 20, in verse 28. There's nothing new about these divisions, though, in reality, because all the way back in the first century, Paul, uh, uh, God, through Paul, warned them that, hey, they're going to happen. And he said, you better watch out, because this, this is how it's going to happen. Acts chapter 20, <clears throat> verse 28. Here Paul calls the elders uh, from Ephesus, the elders from Ephesus, the leaders of, of, of that congregation. They come to meet Paul as, as he's about to uh, head off uh, on his journey to Jerusalem. So, hey, goodbye, everybody. This is my last message to you. What was the last message, message that he gave? What was so important that he wanted to warn them about or encourage them about? Verse <clears throat> 27, I have not shunned to declare to you the whole counsel of God. Therefore, therefore take heed to yourselves and to all the flock among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to shepherd the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. For I know this, verse 29, that after my departure, after I leave, savage wolves will come in among you. Among who? The eldership, the leadership of the church is where the departures would begin, is what Paul is saying. Savage wolves will come in among you. He's talking to the elders. And then what will they do? Not sparing the flock. Verse 30. Also from among yourselves men will rise up speaking perverse things to draw away the disciples after themselves. Therefore watch. The eldership is going to be united if this is the eldership, and then some will come in and split off from, the, from that church, and they will draw people away after themselves. We see this in the first century with Diotrephes and with many others. That's exactly what happened. Uh, and eventually, uh, it, it, the, the church, these different denominations, these different groups, these, uh, they, they began Christian. They, they, they depart so far, so far, so far, and then they're no longer recognizable as, uh, as part of the Lord's church whatsoever. Individual leaders in the church called bishops or elders or overseers or pastors, presbyters, uh, all of this is the same office. They began exerting more and more influence over local congregations. So there might have been three elders or three bishops at, at a congregation like we have here, but then one of those elders would become the chief elder or the head elder. Okay. Uh, so, uh, you know, there, there's a group of elders, but this is the, the main elder, the presiding elder, <clears throat> or bishop, uh, is, is what they were frequently called. Uh, and then they would exert, uh, and so uh, different congregations would have this happen, uh, and then uh, one of those bishops, uh, one of those head bishops would be not, not just bishop over that local congregation, but they would be bishop over a region, maybe all the churches in the city, or maybe all of the churches in this whole area. They, whenever question, someone had a question, they would write to that bishop, or that bishop would exercise authority over there. And then uh, there would be uh, one bishop over many, many, many other areas, and then eventually, what does that lead to? The office of the universal bishop, or pope. And then there is a clergy laity system. Rather than brethren, we are, uh, there's the clergy, there's the magisterium, the, those who are in charge and teach and know, and those who are quiet and sit and learn. And then from there, many new doctrines over the years were developed worldwide, following man made traditions not found in the Bible. There's priestly celibacy, selling of indulgences, confessional booths, rosary, purgatory instruments of music and worship, limbo, infant baptism, the infallibility of the Pope, transubstantiation, 
and many others. And these and other things were predicted to have happened. Uh, they're going to command you to abstain from meats. They're going to command you to do this. They're going to they're command you to uh, do, you know, step by step. It, it almost reads exactly as we find throughout history what happened. In the early 1500s, so uh, that, that is in the first few hundred years after the first century. In the early, uh, so in the 1054, the cat, uh, the, the, this one uh, large denomination split off into the Greek Orthodox Church uh, and the Roman Catholic Church that we still have today. In the early 1500s, so, a few, so that, the, that was sort of the main paradigm for uh, a few hundred years and many generations. But in the early 1500s, there arose people who called them Anabaptists, called themselves Anabaptists, and Anna simply means again, so people who baptize again. Uh, and they rejected the Catholic Church and its practice of infant baptism. From these sprang modern-day Baptists, as well as the Amish and Mennonites, if you didn't know about that. Around the same time, there's a German monk named Martin Luther and others. There's Zwingli and you know, lots of other people. I'm sort of giving you the, the highlights if you're interested. Uh, all of this is very well documented in history. Uh, there's a German monk named Martin Luther who protested against many of the Catholic teachings, and he helped ignite what became known as the Protestant or Protestant Reformation. So a lot of Reformed churches come out of this. But rather than going completely back to the Bible, he and others simply attempted to fix the errors that they saw in the Catholic Church, and many of the errors were good. So if, if you imagine uh, the truth sort of like a pendulum, so, uh, the, the, so if the truth is here, the Catholics basically swung the pendulum too far to this side. Everything was works-based. Everything that you did, it doesn't really matter what you believe, but if you pay this money, if you go through these actions, then you're saved. And then uh, some of these reformers, they said, no, that's wrong because the Bible talks about grace and the Bible talks about faith and the Bible emphasizes belief. So we're going to say, no works at all. So the pendulum swings so far to this way. And as, as is the case, if, if you're ever driving, someone tries to cut you off, uh, you can correct. But a lot of times what happens is we overcorrect, right? And this is what happens historically with people throughout the ages. So works only. If you're baptized as a baby, you're saved, Okay. Uh, if, if you do these things, you're saved. It doesn't really matter if you're sincere or not. You could be a horrible, terrible murderer. You, you do step one, step two, step three, and like, there you go, bingo, bingo. Uh, so what happens is uh, many of these reformers, they, they, they hated that and, and with good cause, so they swung the pendulum too far to the other side, and they say, all you need to do is believe. It doesn't matter what you do. If you sincerely believe, and not only that, if you believe, you can't be lost. So the pendulum swings instead of works, plus obedience, works, and faith. As Jesus says, these two different great uh, arms of these different denominations, they both swing far out to the side, and then they overcorrect, and they both crash. They both fail to abide in the Bible. Luther and another reformer, John Calvin, overcorrected some of these things. Again, as we said, they began to teach many faith-only doctrines. Uh, Luther's followers uh, began the Lutheran church in his name, Presbyterians in the uh, 1560, and Methodists in the 1700s sprang out of this movement as well. With the Salvation Army denomination, so, if, uh, so Salvation Army isn't just like a, 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 an off-brand goodwill. Salvation Army is an actual denomination. So when you sing, uh, see them uh, ringing the bell just, uh, and you, you, you uh, want to give money to them, just imagine if it was a, a Baptist or a Catholic or a Muslim or Hindu ringing a bell asking for donations. Would you give donations to them? If not, then, then uh, consider uh, not giving donations to the Salvation Army. It is just another uh, denomination. Uh, and then much later uh, comes, uh, uh, so the Salvation Army uh, came about uh, around the, the mid-1800s, 1860, 1865, from the uh, Methodists. Uh, the Church of England uh, started in, or the Anglican Church is how it's often uh, known, started in 1534 because King Henry VIII famously wanted to have his marriage uh, to Catherine of Aragon. And it's not Aragorn, for you Lord of the Rings fans, it's Aragon, Catherine of Aragon. She, she could not and did not give him a, a male heir, uh, so uh, he said, no more, and then I'm gonna, I'm, I want another honey. So that's basically what he said, and he wrote the book. He said, Dear Pope, yeah, he didn't, he didn't write this. Uh, basically, Dear Pope, hey, uh, I, w I wanna marry this other lady. Uh, please, uh, please sign here to, to, to let everybody know that I can do that. And Pope said, no. Uh, and, you know, rightly so. Uh, so uh, 
And the Roman Catholic Church said no. So he said, well, fine then. I'm going to take my ball and go home. I'm going to start my own church. So you're the head of the, the Catholic Church. I'm the head. I'm, I'm the new head of the uh, English Church, the Anglican Church. So that's what he did. So he made himself the head of this church, and he said, oh, well, look at me. I, I, know, the, I know the head of this church that I'm now a member of, uh, and uh, the, I know that the leader of the church really well, and I'll, I, I'm pretty sure he'll let me have the divorce that I want. So he got himself divorced, and he married this other woman. And that is as shallow as many of these denominations are. And they largely taught basically the same things that the Catholic Church taught, and it's changed over the years, of course. Um, and this is also where we get the American Episcopal Church. So at, during the Revolutionary War in the 1700s, there were many Anglicans who were Americans, and they said, well, if the king or queen of England is the head of that church and we're sort of like, you know, having a bad breakup, maybe we should like start our own thing here, like spin it off. So instead of Anglicans in America, we have Episcopalians. That, that's, that's where the Episcopal Church comes from. They, they, they wanted to rid themselves of all the authority of the king. The Latter-day Saints, uh, uh, so we're, they're typically known as Mormons, uh, but they, they prefer to be called Latter-day Saints or LDS. Began with Joseph Smith in 1830. He claimed to have visions and that God revealed to him all other churches were wrong and he claimed to receive additional scriptures on golden plates and, and through other means. And that's today known as the Book of Mormon. That, that's where that came from. Uh, it's, it, as far as history goes, it's, it's a very new denomination. Shortly thereafter, in the late 1830s, the Adventists were, bu were begun by a preacher named William Miller. So they were, they were known as Millerites back in the day. And much of this was surrounded, uh, surrounded uh, the, the, them trying to guess and calculate the, day, uh, the, the year and day that Jesus would come back, his advent. So that, that's, that's where the Adventists come from. Uh, they made many predictions that uh, never came to never came to pass. Same as same as the uh, Jehovah's Witnesses, uh, who uh, to a lesser degree sprang from the Adventists. So the Millerites changed to Adventists, and then uh, the, what we know as the Seventh Day Adventists sprang from that movement and that denomination. Uh, they are Adventists that merely worship on Saturday. So they, they have their own beliefs as well, but that is where the Seventh Day Adventists come from. When we see the Advent Hospital, uh, that is ran by uh, members of the Adventist uh, Church. <coughs> Jehovah's, Jehovah's Witnesses, they've been around for not very long, maybe 150 years or so. They came about in the late 1800s. There are many Pentecostal groups, if you see Church of God, Assembly of God, Holiness, uh, th those kinds of things. Many Baptists, uh, many churches that have Baptist on the name are actually uh, very heavily influenced by Pentecostalism. They have their roots in the American revival movements in the late uh, 1800s and early 1900s. All of these are very, very new with a heavy emphasis on the Holy Spirit and supposed spiritual gifts. So uh, I, I have a, a background steeped in Pentecostalism. That, that's where I came from before coming to the Lord's Church. Uh, and they, they have a heavy emphasis on what they call these spiritual gifts, largely focusing on speaking in tongues. Because if, if, if they were focusing on like the gifts of healing or raising people from the dead, like, well, that's pretty easy to prove. But anybody can, can make up a language and say it. That's, that's basically what they do. Uh, if you compare what uh, modern day um, Pentecostals do, to uh, the miracles, the signs in the Bible, it is but a hollow mockery of what we find in the Bible. Someone will come in with a headache and, and the pastor will pray over them and, you know, Dr. Reverend Apostle so-and-so, uh, there, there'll be a whole production and then the person, the migraine is gone. That, that's the kind of thing that's happening. That's the kind of thing that's happening. Things that you can't see, things that you can't verify. Uh, so, someone has knee pain. No, in the Bible, people would have no knees, or they would be paralyzed, or they would be blind, and everybody would know them to be blind for their whole life, and then healed completely. Dead for days, Lazarus come forth. That is what we find in the Bible. The shadow of Paul passes over someone, they're healed. Someone touches the hem of the garment, no prayer, no production, no emotional fervor, instant, complete, irrevocably healed. That is what we find in the Bible. Healed so evidently that even the enemies who wanted to, de wanted to deny it could not deny it. When was the last time you saw a Pentecostal church in the news because they healed someone? Never. 
and if you, it, they have been in the news before, and it's usually, uh, oh, and they were, they were cheating and uh, faking and scamming and all this sort of stuff. I need another jet, send in the money, and then like, I'll heal you and this and that, and they're really just charlatans. Not, not all of them, some of them do very much sincerely believe what they are taught, but uh, many of them uh, are found to be charlatans sooner rather than later. <coughs> Community churches uh, and other non-denominational churches. <clears throat> so if you, if you see a church that has like a sort of a hip name like Venture Church or Action Church or Waterstone, like if, so, sort of cool names that sound like not super churchy, those, those are largely going to be community churches. They're, they're, they're basically uh, very ecumenical, Baptist roots, you know, faith only kind of stuff uh, with a mix of this and like basically whatever you believe, just come on, just come on, come on, come on, come on. You, you can come in, you can give us your money, everybody's welcome. We're not really going to talk about the differences so much as like we're going to have a good feeling sermon uh, and you'll leave feeling better. And we're not really going to get closer to God. We're not really going to focus on evangelism. We're not going to worry about correcting and reproving and doing the hard things that God expects us to do. So as we look through history, you might disagree on various dates and particulars. So Catholics will say, oh, no, we, we started here. Uh, the Eastern Orthodox will say, no, we started then. And Fine. We're going to disagree on various particulars. But one thing we can agree on is that right now there is a lot of division in Christianity, and this is something that the Bible condemns. The Bible condemns it. Jesus established only one church, Matthew 16, 18. I think I said 16, 16 earlier. I had Mark in my mind. We should aim to be part of that one church that he established and not one of the man-made denominations that came much later in history and will not teach you the things that you need to make it to heaven. While many of these denominations, uh, most, if not all of them, claim to be that very same church that we visited in our time machine back in the first century, many of them will claim to be that church. When they all teach different things, they all cannot be right. And just because we also claim to be that very same church doesn't mean that you should trust us. You should compare what we say, what they say, what everybody says against the Bible and ask as many hard questions as you need to so that you can come to the truth. We need to practice what 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 21 says, comparing what they believe in practice against what the Bible says. The Lord's church goes by his name. He died for the church. Not me, not Luther, not any other man. The Lord's church follows his word, not other books, not creeds, not other men. The Lord's church respects his authority does not add nor take away from his word, for the Bible says that it alone is enough to make us complete, thoroughly equipped for every, every, every good work. The Bible has everything that we need. We, and if the Bible is true, then we can believe that. If the Bible is not true, then let's just throw the whole thing out and we can sleep in on Sundays. Obviously, the Bible is true, and if you like evidence, we can talk about that at another date. The Lord's Church teaches the truth on salvation, even when it's inconvenient. The Lord's Church teaches the truth on morality, even when it's inconvenient. Kind, kindly, absolutely, with, with grace, seasoned with grace and seasoned with salt, kindly, but we teach the truth, and we cannot compromise on what the Bible says. The Lord's Church teaches the truth on the church's organization and worship. Even though I like drums and guitars, the church is not about what I want. The church is about what the Lord wants because it's his and not mine. The Lord's church does not compromise when it suits them. The Lord's church cares about evangelism because if you can imagine, if you really think you are on your way to heaven and these other people are not, why would you keep that to yourself? Why, how, how dare we keep that to ourselves? If someone believes they have the truth, why would, why would they do that? If you would like to learn more about the one church of the Bible and how to be part of it, how you can test all of these different denominations about what the Bible says, about what to look for in the church, we invite you to please let us know before you leave here this morning. If you'd like us to pray on your behalf or if you have any other needs, uh, you could even let us know right now as we together stand and sing to encourage you.